All right, guys, now that we understand the basic concept behind a man in the middle attack, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to perform a DNS spoof, which is a specific type of man in the middle attack. And once you see how it's done, then you're going to have a much better idea of how to defend against it. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to install an additional package because we're pretty much going to turn our computer into a router, a device that can sit in the middle of two other devices, which is actually the real router or access point and the victim. So apt-get install and this is bridge utils and you only need to do this one time once it's installed it's going to be good to go so you're probably going to have to press yes I already have it installed on my computer so that's why I didn't actually install but again what this is going to do is it lets our computer act as a bridge and it lets it forward packets based on MAC address rather than IP and that's how routers work so that's the first thing you need the next thing you need to do is you need to enable IP forwarding. So IP forwarding lets you determine the path where the packets are actually sent. Now like I said, this is actually used by routers most often to, de to pretty much decide which network to send the data to. But since we're essentially turning our computer into you know a temporary router, we need to do this. So if you just write echo1, then we're going to write this to and this is just uh, the location of the file net IPv4 and IP underscore forward right there so by default whenever you first turn on your computer this file just has a zero in it that means IP forwarding is not enabled and we're just gonna write a one in there and that just lets our system know that okay we now enabled IP forwarding so again, you only have to do this one time, and you actually need to do this every time you turn on your computer, because whenever your computer first, first boots up, it's going to be a zero. So let me clear out of there, and now we get to the fun stuff. Now we have everything installed, set up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a fake DNS host file. Now I already have one created, and this... 192.168.0.11 that's the IP address of my actual computer that I'm sitting at right now and if you guys are unfamiliar with DNS then I recommend going to watch my uh, networking videos but basically what's gonna happen is whenever a victim they're gonna request a web page and they're gonna go to their browser and they're gonna type in let's say bacon.com well your browser actually needs to know the IP address of that server so it's gonna say hey I got a question, what's the IP address of bacon.com because I can only find the server based on the IP address. So usually a DNS server responds with the correct answer which is like 20 whatever dot whatever dot whatever. However what we're going to say is, oh the IP address of bacon.com, that's actually my computer. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to say and then whenever he thinks he's connecting to bacon.com then we can have a fake bacon.com and well do whatever we want like get his login information whatever so the reason I have this is because there are a bunch of different rules that you can have so this is saying whenever anyone requests a website using www like www.whatever.com and you can have like facebook.com in here um, yahoo.com aol.com whatever you want so there you go basically the answers whenever people request the IP address for a website so now that we have that, the only other file that you need on your computer is an actual, you know, file for the website. And I just made a real simple one. And the location that you put your web files in on your computer is in var. So go to your root directory computer and go to var www html. Let me actually open it with a browser. And alright, so this is the little sample web page I made. But again, it all depends on what website the attacker is trying to be. So he's either going to clone like the Facebook login page, people clone your bank's login page. So I just made this one real quick. But again, you can design it any way you want, depending on, you know, whatever you're trying to do. So that's the location whenever we start the web server on our computer, then whenever someone requests a web page like they're going to do whenever we give them that DNS response that's what's going to pop up 
So there's actually a web server already built into your computer if you're running Kali at least. In order to start it, just type Apache 2 CTL start. Now just hit enter and it's going to say this because um, you know we didn't set it up properly. We're just running this real quick. We don't have a fully qualified name, so whatever, not really important. The important thing is our web server is now up and running. So the last piece of the puzzle is when we start our actual spoofing and I actually need two windows for this. So this first terminal right here, this is going to be for our ARP spoofing. So basically we're constantly going to be sending the victim computer ARP answers telling him that the MAC address belonging to the IP of the router is our MAC address. So whenever he looks for the access point, we're going to be like, yep, uh, that's me right here. And we're going to do the same thing with the access point. The access point's like, hey, who is that guy who I uh, want on Facebook? I'm going to be like, oh, that was me. So I'm pretty much going to be sitting in the middle and all of their messages are going to be passing through me. So then, you know, you can tweak them any way you want. So the victim's IP address, my tablet, is uh, 192.168.0.17 and the router is 0.1. So remember, the actual victim is 17 and the router is one. So if I run ARP spoof, then what we need to do is we need to tell 17 and do the same thing with one and just run an and. And whenever you use this an and character, what it does is it allows you to run multiple commands um, pretty much on the same line. So I don't have to hit, hit enter twice and we're pretty much gonna do this again. So ARP spoof. And I forgot my minus T, uh-uh. All right, so I'll show you guys what we're doing in just a second. All right, so you saw in this first one, we're pretty much running two separate commands right here. But in this first half, the 17 came first, and in the second one, the dot zero one came first. Now remember, this is the victim's actual computer, which is gonna be the tablet I'm about to pick up. And this is the IP address of the router. So these are the devices that we're going to ARP spoof. In other words, tell the victim that our IP is the router's and also tell the router that we are the victim's IP. So we're gonna be lying to both of them. So before you actually run this, let me get our other one ready. And this is the DNS spoof. Now this takes a few parameters. The first one is what is the location of the spoof file? So wherever this is, give it your fake answer. So mine is in desktop, desktop spoof host.txt. Now the other thing that it needs is the host and I'm just gonna write 192.168 and this is pretty much your victim, 0 0.17. Now we actually need to give it a UDP port and this is just a standard port of DNS and this is just for uh, you know networking so everything works correctly and that's it. So whenever this victim requests one of those web pages, those are the answers that we're gonna give them, the answers from here. So you can run any of these in any order. So whenever you hit enter, this is gonna start sending out your ARP, ARP spoof, that's kind of a tongue twister, and now our little fake DNS server is running. So I'm gonna pick up my tablet right now, and let me just go to bacon.com. So you can see right here on the screen that this device, which is the tablet I'm holding on my hand, just requested bacon.com and let me take a screenshot. And there you go. So again, this is a really simple web page, but you can see the danger of this already. What if they requested their bank's website and what if it was designed to look just like your bank's website? What if they requested Google and well, now they have your Gmail. Well, the thing is, once they have your Gmail and they can log into your email account, nothing else even matters because, oh, you want to access Facebook? All you have to do is go to Facebook, say, reset my password, and what are they going to do? They're going to send it to your email. Same thing with your bank account. But, oh, you have verification questions? Well, guess what? I got your effing Facebook. And all of this is happening. Your life is crumbling down. And do you know why? All because you decided to check your Instagram at Starbucks. And maybe next time when you're sipping on a triple mocha chocolate, then you got to think to yourself, you know what? Maybe I should be home. Maybe I should be watching the new Boston instead of filling my fat face with these 
lot day. So you know what? I'm done, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.